Hi, welcome back my steel design friends. In this video we're going to start our study of basic steel behavior by examining the material characteristics of ductile metals. We'll talk about things like um, stress and strain, proportional limit, elastic limit, and simple characteristics like that. In the end we'll talk about some very specific grades of steel and some of their characteristic values that are used in design throughout this particular series. So without further ado, let's get started. So in the study of steel design, we're going to start off with a basic mechanics approach and look at general, a general overview of basic material properties for stress and strain. For a typical ductile material such as steel, generally we get a curve that looks something kind of like the following. There is an elastic region and a plastic region and kind of an imaginary line that divides it. Within the elastic region, from a stress of zero and a strain of zero, so the strain is on the horizontal axis, stress is on the vertical axis, this is a fairly linear relationship up to some point. Now, different metals behave differently, but they all tend to have this elastic, uh, this basic elastic criteria. We know that the elastic behavior, the slope of this line, is defined by some constant E to a ratio of one. And that's just coming out of the one-dimensional Hooke's law in which sigma is equal to E times epsilon. Okay, as you know, sigma is the stress and typically for a tensile coupon is P over A, epsilon is the strain and it's typically some delta over L of how much the bar grows versus the basic length. So if I look at a tensile test and this is my length, there's my length and delta is how much this bar would grow if this is a P and then of course the the a that we're talking about is the cross-sectional area of this constant coupon if you will okay so if we kind of take a look and we and we look at this then our constant region is within the elastic region and the elastic region is defined as if i take this bar and i stretch it and then i unload it it will return back to its same basic shape once i get to the end of the elastic region this point right here okay is the proportional limit That's defined. All right. Going up, then it starts to become a little bit of a non-linear uh, non characteristic. And it, my diagram shows it as kind of linear, but it starts to kind of curl over a little bit. And it reaches a little another value that's generally a little bit higher. It's not a whole lot, OK, in which this is the yield point, OK, right here kind of at the peak. And again, this is for ductile metals. Now, if you have a brittle material or a brittle metal, such as like cast iron or something, you may not get this dip. It might just kind of gradually start to curl over okay, because something else happens once you get into the plastic region. Okay, at the yield limit, this guy is going to be labeled as FY by AISC, the American Institute of Steel Construction. And so this is FY, that's our yield stress. Okay, now we get into, um, so that kind of fully defines our elastic region. Once we get into the plastic region, okay, after yield occurs, you'll get some sort of necking where this thing will start to kind of narrow down because it's no longer, it's starting to kind of, the, the Poisson effect, if you will. Remember how if you stretch something in one direction, it shrinks in the other, okay, the, the Poisson effect. And that reduces the area, which then will start to change the load and change the stress and change the strain accordingly. And we start to I increase in strain faster than we increase in load. It's no longer this linear relationship. It's always something flatter if you look at it that way. Okay, and so we get into this and then it drops down to where it starts to neck and then the crystalline structure within inside of the material starts to rearrange itself at the atomic level a little bit and things start to uh, realign and it goes through something known as stra um, strain hardening. Okay, and it actually starts to regain some strength and becomes stronger than it was before. And this is a technique that you can do to increase strength, you know, uh, through, through, through working with the steel. Um, kind of kind of overstress it a little bit and it actually becomes harder for a little while. You don't have as much ductility, okay, but in general that's um, the behavior that we have. It will then kind of increase kind of non-linearly up to a maximum point that's up here, okay, and this is called ultimate, okay, and if we take that line over on our stress, if you will, 
over to here, okay, that's going to be labeled as FU, the ultimate stress, okay, and so all metals that you use when you're using the AISC uh, steel manual, the calculations you do will either use FY or FU, okay, and, you know, for different grades of steel, these have different values, and I'll show you some of those here in just a moment, okay, once you reach ultimate, that's the highest stress level you can achieve, okay. Um, the then starts to drop off a little bit and then eventually it will fracture and this is our rupture point here. That's kind of just a general consensus of what the, the basic ductile behavior is going to start to look like. Now there are some characteristics that happen in this that you may have learned in a material science class um, such as if I load, you know, if I start out at zero, I go through the linear region, go past yield and I go up to here, okay, and then I let off the load, what will happen is this line it will start to unload such that at zero stress there is now a permanent deformation kind of a, a permanent strain that's residual here it's like if you take a rubber band and you stretch it and let off it returns back to shape but if I take it and I stretch it just a little too far but I don't break it it starts to get kind of you know unaligned and it's kind of distorted in shape and it's not it's longer than it was when it started that's the reason for it because it follows back the same unloading curves you saw in the elastic region it's e to one young's modulus now for everything that we do in this class okay we're going to be taking e as 29,000 ksi now again this depends on the metal that you're using it might be 31 it might be 28 but for our purposes this is the value that we're going to use going forward we'll always use 29,000 for our E value for, for what we're doing here. Okay, now um, again, this is just kind of a basic overview of, of the, the material properties and the material characteristics, but that's the, the nature of what the diagram looks like. So we gotta be kind of uh, aware of, more than anything, FY and FU. Now we don't really worry about strains so much, you know, on the values of the strain um, in steel design, not like we do in concrete, but in steel, we kind of look at it and say, well, for, you know, while it's linear, this is the elastic region that we have here, and then this is plastic. Okay, from a design standpoint, though, it makes sense that, you know, elastic, we want to design a structure, for the most part, to, you know, the major members to be elastic. We don't want a structure such that when I put a load on it, it deforms and it permanently deforms so that when the load leaves, you know, the, the, the car leaves the bridge or the, you know, the live load in the building leaves the room, that we have a permanent deformation. We want it to return back to its original undeformed state. So a lot of the design that we do is going to be bounded in this elastic region, not all of it, um, but, you know, the member design, a lot of it deals with this elastic region and places where Hooke's Law is still valid. Okay, now things like connections with bolts and welds and stuff like that, um, uh, ultimate failures and ripout failures, will actually slide over and we'll grab this ultimate value. But that typically occurs in elements where deformations aren't very big, they're very, very small. You know, like a, like a welded connection won't deform a whole lot before you actually fracture the weld or... Or, or fail the connection. So, so there is some, some, some play in what's happening here, but you'll, you'll start to get a sense of what's ultimate and what's yield and when they're used as we start to go through the different types of studies that we're gonna look at, tension members, beams, columns, bolts, welds, et cetera, et cetera. So, all right, so anyway, um, so that's our basic stress strain curve. Now, there is one other thing that I wanna kinda of talk about, and we'll slide this over here a little bit. Okay, and we're gonna talk a little bit about um, basically um, the different types of shapes that we're going to look at. Now, steel design has uh, several different um, areas. We have what we call hot rolled shapes and cold formed or cold rolled type of shapes, and they're designed a little bit differently. So we're going to deal with predominantly what we call hot roll. A cold rolled class is generally like a graduate level class and it's beyond the scope of what we want to cover. Okay, now the common material strength that you're going to see and what we're doing in this series is we're looking at FY, which is a yield strength, Okay, and then FU is the ultimate. Those are the two that we just talked about on that last curve. Okay, and then there are three common grades, really two now, but over the last 10 or 15 years, the three most common in practice were A36, A572, and A992. Okay, and so they had different uses and different designations. Now, the distinctions between what's used and when has started to fade a lot in recent years. But, uh, and in fact, the A572 grade 50, his material has basically been replaced with A992, the, the, common equ the, the current equivalent. It has some, a different chemical composition to it, 
but it's uh, for the most part, for, for all practical purposes, you'll see that it has the same FY and FU uh, ultimate stresses and yield stresses as the original grade 50. But I wanted you to be aware of that one because if you do any sort of uh, work on an older building, you may well encounter this guy. Okay, there's actually, you know, grade 60s and some other grades in here as well. There's special materials, but but by far these are the three most common. So the A36 is a general purpose material. It's often used in plate material or plate stock. And so um, the the A is an ASTM specification and then the 36 is kind of like the recipe number. So an A36 steel you know, within a certain degree of tolerance, has a yield strength of what is supposed to be at least 36 KSI and an ultimate stress of 58. Okay, now, in reality, an A36 material will go up as high as 80 max, because again, it depends on the chemical composition of a particular batch. So, but for our design purposes, anytime A36 is used, FY is 36 and FU is 58. The A572 grade 50 and A992 are all FY50 KSI, so it's a larger yield stress, and the ultimate is 65, so it's actually larger here as well. Okay, and so there used to be, what, back when these higher grades of steel first were kind of being developed, there was a significant cost difference between these. And if we remember back that sigma was equal to P over A, like we just showed here on this formula, Okay, well, if my sigma is higher, then I don't need as much material for a given load to be able to get the same performance. And since cost is generally associated with the weight of the steel, which is a function of the area of the steel, you know, a higher grade steel would get you a smaller member and depending on the price could actually get you a cheaper structure, which is where these guys were all born out of. Okay, now, as the dollar amounts have kind of converged in recent years, I mean, A982 is still a little bit larger, you know, but in, it's the typically it's the strength and the costs are comparable. They're not leagues different anymore. So so that's where we're kind of going with this. So FY is 50 for, for those guys. Okay, so that's for your rolled shapes. These are things like your W sections, your channels, your angles, and we'll talk about those in another video, how the designations work and the way that you can kind of explore the information on those. Okay, the other material that you'll come across have to do with the connections. And so we have our bolts. Okay, the most common is an A325. So again, it's an ASTM specification. It's a 325, um, again, recipe number, if you will. And these are the high strength uh, structural bolts. Okay, and they'll have an FY of 80 KSI and an ultimate of 105. So they're significantly higher than the base metals. And that should make sense because the forces in a member, in order to leave the member, have to travel through a connection. And so generally connections are a lot smaller than the member, so you need higher stresses to help get the load transferred into it. Okay, um, on bolts, very seldom do we use the FY value. It's generally an FU value that's being used. And in fact, I'll show you in the AISC manual when we get there, the tables that we use that I hardly ever use this value anyway. It's in there in the tables that I'm going to show you, but we just, we don't do those calculations very often. Okay, another grade of steel is an A490. You can see that it's a, these are a higher strength bolt. And instead of being 80, it's now 115. And I've used these so, so seldom, I'm not even sure what the FU is. I presume that it's even larger than that. Okay, and then we get into your smaller size bolts, like your machine bolts, the little, you know, micro fine bolts in the threads. Okay, FY, not really specified and the ultimate on that will be about 100. So you can see ultimates in the range of about 100 KSI are pretty common for the most common types of bolts. So a structural bolt will be a bolt that starts out, it might be 3 sixteenths of an inch and it'll go up to an inch and a half. Okay, and then anything larger than that is a, a different type of material and anything smaller than that is generally an A307. So there's standard sizes that are used on those. Okay, um, the, the other material that we're gonna kind of look at is um, and again, we're only going to kind of touch on this, but just kind of once you're getting used to the designation is the weld material. Okay, and this is for the weld material of a, of a submerged metal arc welding or a small process. Okay, as opposed to, you know, saws or other, other types of welding. The, the small that we're going to look at, um, we talk about the electrode strength, which is the metal that's being deposited to fuse two steel pieces together. Um, the most common that you'll encounter and everything that we'll deal with in this class is what we call an E70XX electrode, okay? In which our FY is 60 KSI and our ultimate is 70, okay? Now the E designates that it's an electrode metal. Generally it could be a stick or it could be some sort of wire that is fed through a welding machine and then 
you know, mix them with gas to help with the fusion process, if you will. But you can kind of see the designator on this is that the E70 has an ultimate stress of 70 KSI, and E60 actually has a 60 KSI. So this designator is actually the FU. Okay, because again, welds are kind of like bolts. They're generally smaller in nature, so we don't often do much with the FY. We're looking more at the ultimate strength of the, of the, of the connection or the calculation of the weld material as opposed to FY. But just to kind of give you a sense of the values, I want to go ahead and list both. So, we're, so for bolts and welds, typically we're using FU, and for everything else, we're going to be using both FY and FU depending on what our load scenario is doing. So I hope that's kind of giving you a little bit of insight into some of the, the material behaviors uh, and as well as some of the designations that you're going to see. There aren't very many of them and so for us, especially for the plates and the flat rolled stuff up here, you might as well just memorize these numbers now. It's 36 and 58 and 50 and 65 and if you remember those you'll be good for the rest of the series of the class. Okay, like I say, bolts and welds are a little bit different. So um, I hope it's made sense to you. Uh, it's kind of a, a quick one just to kind of get our feet wet and kind of get some so some of the overhead out of the way as we start to move forward into the actual design and calculations of this particular series. So anyway, we will see you guys next time. As always, toss us some comments down below. If you got any questions or any feedback, we'd great to, love to hear it. And be sure to subscribe to the channel and we'll see some more videos coming soon. So have a great afternoon. Happy engineering.